Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to continue to have a look at the latest on the very cold weather we do have uh, consuming the British Isles at the moment. We've got at least another five days widely of cold weather, potentially for some even another seven days with this cold weather looking quite likely, especially further north and eastwards to be lasting all the way into next weekend. There's going to be numerous more opportunities for snow, potentially significant snow at times. Um, and at the moment, we do have quite a bit of snowfall around. So we'll run through the weather warnings, uh, have a look at the UKV, look at the temperature and precipitation, various other uh, snow charts as well to see the potential for next week. Um, and then, of course, we'll have a look at the longer range, look at the GFS, GM, ESIMWF, and the ensembles, as there are signs that we could hold on to the cold weather for even longer than the next seven days. But the majority of models at this stage do bring westerlies in uh, at around next weekend. Could be a bit of a snowy breakdown, but eventually milder air will push in. That looks like the most likely scenario. But there still are some runs, maybe about a quarter to maybe a third, that are hanging on to that colder air with that cold, dense block just staying over the top of us potentially all the way to the christmas period on some of these runs and even in other runs like the gfs operational run has two or three days of mild weather before turning as much cold once again for the christmas period so we'll just have to see how that does evolve so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the link's in the description so do you start on the live radar you can see it's another day of generally dry conditions but quite a few heavy snow showers around especially towards coastal areas the flow has slightly shifted towards a northwesterly wind of the course of the last 24 hours and that's why yesterday's video we did highlight the risk of some maybe significant snow in the west especially looking at that northwest region and we have seen that over the course of last night and continuing into today frequent heavy showers pushing in perhaps rain right on the immediate coast but anywhere inland turning redly to snow Snow. Even Manchester Airport was closed this morning due to a few centimetres of snow. Uh, and you can see these showers are associated with an, sort of an upper trough because you can see they are lasting quite far inland. So there is instability there. You can't even rule out this area of snow here, perhaps making its way into the Midlands as well over the course of this afternoon and evening. And because the ground is so cold, sunset, uh, by the time you're seeing this, uh, is imminent. Um, you know, when the skies do dark, go dark and the ground freezes, that any of this snow will readily settle so even if it's only sort of a half an hour moderate shower we can still see disruption so we have to keep an eye on that over the course of the evening it's one of these sort of a snowfall events especially for the northwest where it's very uh very uncertain very difficult to predict all we knew was showers would be coming in whether where would they line up how significant they would be it's anyone's guess and it's been a little bit more significant than we probably expected uh, and we've seen quite a few centimeters in some places um, towards the northwest and parts of north wales and of course could drift inland more over the course of this evening more showers across the southwest as well being more towards southwest sort of the mildest area really for the british isles climatologically um it does mean that quite a few of these showers are more of a wintry mix still snow inland and over especially the higher ground but more of a wintry mix uh, of course if these fell overnight there would be probably more snow within these so a lot of showers pushing in at the west at the moment could drift further inland some of the models are showing these lasting into the midlands as well over the course of this evening perhaps into yorkshire as well where they're already starting to get in so we'll have to see exactly how that does develop so again could be some falling snow and maybe a centimeter or two in some of the heavier showers was elsewhere we've got still frequent showers across scotland There's another little feature here pushing down uh, again uncertain how much this stays intact as it spreads through southern scotland and northeast england and again across the south you see a lot of heavy showers here again perhaps the start of that potential little low pressure system that pushes into the southeast through tomorrow into monday again still a big uncertainty with that within the short range models Quite a few of them now are just keeping it clipping parts of Kent and Essex. Where it does come inland will produce significant snow because uh, it will be very slow moving. But there's so much uncertainty in its positioning and how far inland it pushes. Even some runs have it just either staying in the channel or just across parts of France. We'll have to see how that really does develop tomorrow. But we've still got that warning 
in force. Of course, as we head into next week, we do see those slider lows arrive. They do look highly likely now to be bringing the majority of their precipitation into northern France and the Channel, which does mean that UK stays very cold and perhaps brings in more of a northeasterly wind next week. So these east coastal areas, which have seen some snow in parts of East England in general, uh, but haven't seen too much, could see a lot more next week in the form of showers. And again, we'll kind of pinpoint that in this video. Now, if we do go over to the weather warnings, you can see we've got widespread snow and ice warnings. The warning in the west was changed to a snow and ice warning because those showers were more, more, more intense than we initially anticipated. You can see updated northern lines have been removed from the warning area. Showers much look much less frequent here. and There is some risk of some accumulations to lower levels during Sunday morning following a cold night. And that's what we did see um, again. Frequent wintry showers like to fall on frozen surfaces, potential for several uh, centimetres to fall over higher ground and potentially to lower levels, high likelihood lower end of the impact and it, uh, impact metrics, and it leads all the way till midday tomorrow. And of course, we've got the snow and ice warning still across parts of Scotland here. Snow and icy surfaces from uh, Wednesday all the way till tomorrow, uh, that warning there, and then another one from this morning until midday tomorrow, and that's that system that's moving into parts of eastern Scotland now could move the southwards and give more snow for southern and eastern parts. Again, if we move into tomorrow, we've got another widespread sort of yellow and snow ice warning uh, again from midday tomorrow until midday on Monday, again for more heavy showers. We've got the rest of those warnings to enforce that are in force today, and then we've got the southeast one, which snow may push, push into parts of uh, eastern and southeastern England. Again, been pushed towards tomorrow evening, so it could fall in overnight. That does mean uh, the snow could accumulate more often. Um, so it could be quite impactful there. And again, the impact nature hasn't changed. High impact, low likelihood. Could be quite a bit of snow here, but it's the most uncertainty we have with this um, uh, to see how far inland it does push. And if we move into Monday, just those two snow and ice warnings, but I'm sure we'll see more warnings put in force through today or tomorrow. Now, if we do go over to the UK, V, and have a look at the precipitation and temperature over the course of the next five days, you can see those showers into the prone areas across parts of Scotland, Northern Ireland, and western parts of England and Wales. Now those continue to push in, and over the course of this afternoon, you can see that area across northwest England is quite a bit more intense than the model was making it out to be. So in reality, it's developed slightly more, and it could push further inland over the course of this evening. Um, but again, you can see a few showers there across parts of the Midlands, maybe central southern England. So that area of instability, a few showers lasting into tomorrow morning, perhaps. So we'll have to see exactly what happens with that. Again, big uncertainty, again, because those showers do pop out of no so could there be a bit of instability in the air from some of those showers? Perhaps that's what we were seeing in the northwest England moving in, and that could you know, pop up a few showers overnight through central areas. So again, that could provide some snowfall in areas. Again, nothing significant, but falling onto frozen surfaces would accumulate readily, and if you're up early in the morning, could be quite slippery and icy out there. Again, you can see that snow down across parts of northeast England and southern Wales, uh, so, so southern Scotland pushing through, and again, petering out as it does. And then you can see the little low in the far southeast that starts to develop through Sunday evening, pushing in land, but only really kept clipping parts of Kent and Essex, not coming quite as far in land as the models were showing yesterday. So again, have to see what happens with that, but could, again, could drop 10 centimetres plus of snow in the sort of the centre of that band. As we head through Monday, you can see once again, those snow showers continue to try and push in, but it's actually a slightly drier day on Monday with slacker flow as lower pressure tries to run up from the south. Most of that snow gets dumped into northern France and elsewhere we start to pull in more of a northeasterly wind. So you can see those showers peppering more northeast coasts, but not too significant here, but we see a push of more cold, unstable air from the north. And again, small little lows and disturbances uh, through Wednesday and Thursday there across the northeast coast, maybe down across parts far west. Again, don't want to look into these too in too much detail because they will change by Thursday, but again, could provide significant snow in a few areas, similar to what we saw across northwest England earlier this morning. Again, nothing major, you know, no sort of five inches of snow, but enough, a few centimetres to cause disruption uh, to roads 
air travel, things like that over the course of the next few days. So we'll have to really keep a close eye on that. Again, look at the upper air temperatures, basically cold all the way to next week, perhaps even getting colder with reinforcements of northeasterly winds next week. And again, if we have a look at the max temperatures, of course, the next five days, you'll see again, it hardly gets above freezing. Today, maybe two to four degrees in a few spots, but widely around the freezing point. Overnight tonight, widely down towards the minus, uh, down towards minus numbers, down to maybe minus six or seven across the far southeast. Further westwards through central areas, more cloud around, so it does mean those, temp uh, those temperatures hover more towards the freezing point. Through tomorrow afternoon, very cold. Uh, again, maxes of one or two degrees, but widely still towards that freezing point. And of course, through Sunday evening, freezing cold once again, minus five degrees quite widely. Uh, and areas with cloud, maybe only minus one or two. And through Monday afternoon, you can see those temperatures hardly rising, but freezing widely through central areas, minus one or minus two, freezing cold. So any wintriness that falls out of the sky through Monday, that will readily be settling. So that could cause some some issues where we do see showers and then Monday night look at that across Scotland minus 15 to maybe minus 20 is possible and through Tuesday afternoon look at that widely freezing so very cold and again through Wednesday bitterly cold once again and Wednesday in the day widely freezing and again a repeat into Thursday so we're seeing here pretty much 10 days of freezing cold conditions where temperatures hardly getting above one or two degrees in the day and widely down sort of minus five degrees overnight very interested to see the cet in about a week's time it's going to be many many degrees below average um we could be we could if we do stay reasonably cold towards the second half of the month or at least average we could be seeing one of the coldest decembers we've had since december 2010 again we've not seen any of the snow compared to that so far um so i do think comparisons to 2010 in terms of temperatures could be there in terms of the sort of persistent cold but remember 2010 saw the heavy snowfall and the heavy snowfall contributes to even colder temperatures so it's sort of a cyclical effect so we did see heavy snowfall with this i'm sure we'd see those temperatures even lower than they are now but we're not seeing that widespread heavy snowfall yet uh, i must stress yet because things can very quickly develop small features can develop can dump widespread a few centimeters of snow so we'll have to see what happens towards next week but it's remaining very cold more opportunities for uh, some snow in places but we're not seeing any heavy dumps of snow at this stage those weather fronts pushing up from the southwest look likely to hang in the channel or across north france uh, but again all eyes will be on the convection next week and then towards next weekend where there is the potential for a breakdown but as we'll see in the second half of, the, of this video some uh, models hold on to the cold air for longer that could provide a dumping of snow especially in the north so we'll have to see again what happens with that if we do go over to the icon run and have a look at the precipitation and the temperature just over the next five days just to compare really shower amounts again through this evening uh, again you can see showers in pretty much the standard areas some coming inland into the midlands but nothing too crazy and through tomorrow afternoon you see that snow trying to push into the southeast but actually staying across uh, france and the channel so interestingly not really impacting us at all and then again quite a few showers around but again not too many coming inland and again that system down the northeast coast potentially through tuesday which could give more significant snow quite a lot of snowfall there across northeast coast again i could could be hinting at it a bit of a disturbance if that came in land could provide quite widespread heavy snowfall and then as we head into thursday and friday again holding off that snow quite a bit again i have seen that from the icon a lot it does keep those snow showers offshore where they actually do come more inland so we'll have to see how that does develop over the next few days but still frequent snow showers around with that shift as i said through early into the middle of next week coming more towards the east coast if you go and have a look at the RPS, just look at the next 72 hours of snowfall. Again, you can see, of course, this afternoon, that snow potentially coming more inland over the course of this evening and overnight, but again, uh, through Midlands, but again, nothing too significant. And then the southeast, maybe uh, of that rain and snow pushing in, but again, holding off a bit uh, and staying more towards the far coastal areas of Kent and Essex, not coming too far inland. And through Monday, again, frequent showers around into coastal areas. And again, maybe into central southern England and into Wales there. It could be a bit of a system there, providing those showers. Again, unusual for them to pop in land just by themselves. So again, could be something interesting there. But again, we'll have to see. And then through Tuesday, again, you can see the flow starting to change more northeasterly. Um, 
and again that could push more showers along the east coast so again we'll have to see exactly what happens with that now after you move into the longer range have a look at the gfs gm east and wf and the ensembles now you can see one, uh, an incredibly cold and blocked chart with a huge high pressure system up towards greenland but it's going to slowly lose its strength through this week still keeping us cold all the way to next weekend but perhaps after that losing out so you can see more of a northeasterly flow from around wednesday time with reinforcements of cold rare and again it depends on this low pressure system how much it pushes in land because it generally stays to our south and it's into next Saturday. You can see low pressure arise from the, from the west, providing a southerly wind. And the reason for this is because that block towards Greenland and Iceland has dissipated. Now we start to pull in a southerly wind. It goes quite mild there for a couple of days. But watch what happens after that towards the Christmas period. Blocking re-emerges towards Greenland, putting a northerly wind in and tries to get it going towards Scandinavia and tries to pull back in another easterly. So there for a few days, just right before Christmas, we go very cold again. Probably not particularly snowy, more under higher pressure, but we'd be very cold um, all the way to the Christmas period before weather fronts try and push that cold air away, but it comes up against a high, a high pressure block towards Scandinavia. So as I said, GFS keeps us very cold until next weekend, quite an uh, unsettled breakdown with big precipitation towards next weekend, but mostly rain. Before we go to a couple of days of mild weather, but around the 22nd, 23rd of December, sort of around 10 days plus time, then we do see higher pressure trying to build back in northerly wind initially, and then maybe an easterly for the Christmas period starting to develop. So once again, I did stress this in yesterday's video, generally when we see these very cold patterns like we are seeing at the moment and we're going to see for the next week and we've seen for the past week especially when they're longer terms of weather patterns very rarely do they just completely break down and just disappear quite often we see them reoccur maybe not as strong maybe more severe um, but they do reoccur because it's it's an atmospheric pattern so it is quite likely or it is at least more likely than normal to see these blocking patterns re-emerge um, towards the end of december definitely from what we suggested in our winter look aheads the fact was that december uh, and at least perhaps january as well was going to have an above average chance of colder spells so this definitely does play into that so yes it does look more likely than not that we do go slightly milder next weekend temperatures return towards average rain falling out of the sky and temperatures maybe towards the mid to high single digits maybe even double digits in a few spots but will it turn cold after that there is the potential and we'll have to see if you look at the gm see how that does compare again higher pressure still towards greenland cold air in a uh, with, in, in with us, and then you can see northern wind pushing in, quite unsettled, bitterly cold air running in. Again, small little systems could develop within that flow there, very unsettled flow that could give more snow through Wednesday and Thursday next week, for eventually we see a southerly wind pushing temporarily, but at day 10, again, a lot more blocking towards the mid-Atlantic. Again, it's not penetrating into the Arctic, so it's not giving us bitterly cold air, but it's keeping us cold uh towards the 20th of december and again we'll have to keep an eye on how that does develop but at least for a few days there it does go very mild maybe the even the 10 degree isotherm pushing in for the far southeast so yeah going from very cold to very mild in the space of a couple of days this would be a very unsettled rainy breakdown there now if you go to the ecmwf this does something very interesting today it actually keeps us kind of cold and blocked all the way till day 10 uh, so while we have that mild breakdown it sort of halts it a little bit so you run through it you can see generally still very unsettled and very cold as we head into the middle of the week you see more northeasterly reinforcements so basically cold could be very unstable in that flow small little low pressure systems developing and could keep us cold and maybe it's more snow as we do the next weekend a southerly wind tries to push in and what it does is it does bring milder air for the south but at day 10 look at this higher pressure is developing back towards greenland and starting to pull in uh, or trying to pull in a northerly wind once again once this low clears you'd expect us to see a northerly wind so again it does go mild for a couple of days but keeps us blocked and again if this high pressure system develops this could be shifted slightly further southwards and these could turn into channel lows and be snowy again that's highly uh, highly unlikely but it is a possibility as this Greenland high remaining or at least restrengthening at day 10 is appearing both on the GFS and the ECMWF today um, for the longer range. So we'll have to keep an eye on it. Definitely all models are suggesting 
milder air trying to push in towards the weekend and being pretty successful. How successful? We'll have to see, of course, how far north it does spread, but definitely getting into most of England and Wales and the Republic of Ireland um, and pro probably into Scotland as well from some of these runs, but potentially only for a couple of days before the colder air could return. Now, if you do look at the ensemble members, looking at the GFS first, you can see definitely very cold until around the 17th, 18th, so around a week's time, and then we see the rise in upper air temperatures. But quite a bit of scatter, quite a few keeping us uh, well below average, maybe about a third, maybe. And then beyond that, you can see we actually return below average with the operational run going very cold, quite a few ensemble members going very cold once again. So, yes, towards the Christmas period, could turn a little bit colder once again. No concrete signal, but definitely potentially. A little bit of a trend of that blocking to return. Now, if you do look at the snow net spikes again for the next week or so, you can see quite a few snow net spikes, but again, these will be very much up and down depending on the little features that develop. And of course, the ensemble members are not going to pick up on those particularly well uh, because they are uh, low resolution. Dew points staying freezing cold around to sort of next weekend and beyond perhaps, some even hanging on even colder. That's all the way to sort of the 20th. Because remember, what mild, slightly milder air aloft doesn't always mean it displaces the cold air at the surface. So yes, snowfall likely to be cut out by next Saturday, Sunday time, but could still stay very cold at the surface, perhaps even today 10 on some of these runs. And again, you can see that on the two meter temperatures, some models keeping us very cold all the, all the way to the next Monday, by the Monday the 19th. But regardless of that, milder air pushing in most to keep us still in the mid single digits, keeping us still reasonably chilly, probably not getting much above average this time of year. Now, after you finish, but just have a look at the upper air temperatures for the ECMWF ensemble members. Again, very tight consistency for very cold air to remain in place all the way to around the 18th for we do see a rise. But again, it's not a rise from all. Still quite a few staying reasonably cold. And you can see as we get towards the Christmas period, we trend back towards or below average. Again, could be signs that blocking tries to build in more stationary air masses, maybe slightly colder air. And you can see that from the control run there, which does go very cold for Christmas. So again, we'll have to see. Um, that is something that I do think is very possible from what, what the control run is doing. You can see this thicker blue run line here. 18th starts going milder, goes milder for maybe three or four days for plunging colder again around the 22nd to the 25th. Again, not guaranteed, but that's something that I could very much see being a real possibility and even when it does go above average here for around the 19th to the 23rd it still probably could be quite chilly at the surface so yeah we could be really setting up quite a cold month here definitely the first half looks well 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 below average the second half not looking all too mild at all yes mild wrapper air temperatures could come for in for a couple days but Am I, think, uh, am I seeing a massive pest from the West pattern developing, which we'd need, really, to offset this very cold first two weeks? Uh, no, I'm not. I think there is potential for blocking to return around the Christmas period. But we've got a lot to get through until we get to that stage. Still a very cold week coming up. Still the potential for frequent and maybe heavy snow at times. So we'll have to see exactly what happens. But anyway, stay safe out there. It is very cold. Uh, there is snow around. There will be a lot of icy stretches. So do stay safe. Uh, and I'll see you again for another video soon.